Okay, we're going to have a look at some other ways that you can put tonal shading onto um, images in Photoshop. So this is a picture drawn in isometric of a cylinder. So it's just a, literally a JPEG image I've brought in and opened. On my right hand side over here I've set up a number of palettes ready to go. So I've got my colours, I've got colour swatches, I've got one called history which is really good for stepping back. If we make a mistake we can go back a step and so on. I've got brush presets, tool presets and I've got my brush tool itself. Now the tool presets is one you won't have seen before probably but all of these are switched on just through the window over here so I click on window and click on the ones that I want to switch on and it will bring them in for me. I've got layers at the bottom which I always use but what I've done which is different this time is I've set up this workspace and I've called it marker rendering. Now the way to do that as long as you're on an active tool this bit up here is highlighted you can click down here choose new workspace and you can literally give it a name so you can create your own workspace and it will remember all of the tools you've got set up and it will have them ready for you. So I've done that and I've called mine marker rendering. However, um, I want to see what brushes I've got in the presets already. So I switch on the brushes tool and I can see that I've got these four here. Now I've created another set called Loretto markers and I'm going to load those in as well. So as long as I'm on the brush tool and I'm in the tool presets, I come to the menu icon, I go down and I choose load tool presets. Photoshop shading and there's one called Loretto Marker so I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to say load and you can see straight away it chucked a few more in there for me so now I've got one a wide liner I've got a Copic marker a heavy marker and so on so these are different sorts of they're called brushes although you're going to think of them more like markers they're going to be used for actually shading you can see straight away I've got a different icon now because it's selected one of those to use because I'm on the brush tool so I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger so I don't need to show that menu anymore now so I'm going to stretch that out a little bit. Um, I just want to show you a few of these before I go any further just so you can see basically what they look like and also what the history does. So if I decided to go for a heavy marker with a small tip I can draw lines. If I want to change my colour there's many ways to do that but probably the easiest is just to go into colour over here and you can change that. On my keyboard if I use the square bracket tool if I go one way it becomes bigger so I'm just pressing my key here if I use the left bracket it goes smaller so I can create different sizes of pen if I go to my history now you can see it's kept a list of all the things I've done so if I decide I didn't want to do these I can actually step back through them right away to the open position and all of these things I've done are now forgotten so I'm back to start again so that's a really useful tool okay back into my tool presets Copic marker you can see that's a much wider one but one of the things that's going to be difficult is at the moment if I try and do a line first of all it's hard to keep it as a straight line let's make it a nicer color so we can see that we'll use swatches this time choose a pink color um, it's difficult to orient the page the way I want so I'm going to show you in a minute how I can rotate the page to make it easier but we're also going to select areas to make it so that we can't draw where we don't want to draw so I'm going to come back into my um, move tool, I'm going to go into my, sorry, I'm going to choose history and I'm going to come back to the beginning again and I'm going to start selecting areas. So I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to use in the first instance this one over here, the quick selection tool. I'm on my background layer and I'm going to select that whole internal area. Now you can see it's done that main bit but if I know, if I zoom in on here, it hasn't quite gone into that corner bit for me. That's a little bit annoying. So what I want to do is I just want to add a little bit more to that. So I'm going to stay in my same tool and I'm going to add a little bit in there. So it covers that white bit, that little bit extra. Zoom all the way back out, double click the magnifying glass. Space bar will let me move it all around. You can see now that selection area. So while that's selected, I'm going to create a new layer and while I'm on that layer, I'm going to create a mask. So now I've got this area masked off. I can rename it and call that um, body. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing now for this area. I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to select that area. I'm going to create a new layer, create a mask on that layer. And then I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call this one um, top. Or in fact, maybe I'll call that end makes a bit more sense. So I've selected the areas I'm going to work with but how am I going to work with them? 